Let's see how the Beelink SEI14 mini PC performs in day-to-day -day tasks as well as gaming. In terms of specifications, it is equipped with Intel Core Ultra 5 125H processor, 32GB of DDR5 memory, 1TB of SSD storage, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth, as well as 2.5 Gigabit LAN. This mini PC is compact. It also packs a really nice heatsink, so the cooling is pretty good, and we'll take a look at that later on. And this mini PC is a good option for someone who doesn't have space on their desk to <laughs> have something like this, a massive PC. Yeah, this is a huge difference. Check it out. You can save a lot of space using a mini PC. Here it is for scale, next to a keyboard and a mouse. The mini PC is barely taller than the mouse. On the front panel we have a power button, that's a clear CMOS button that is hidden behind there, so you need a pin to press it. 3.5mm jack, USB Type-C and USB Type-A. At the back we see the exhaust, that's where all the hot air will escape. And here is the intake, basically the whole of the bottom part is the intake. On the back I.O. panel we get three USB Type-A ports, 2.5 gigabit LAN, display port, HDMI, 3.5mm audio connection, and this is marked as USB Type-C. However, this is actually a Thunderbolt port. And this is the power connector, because you do get an external power break with it. This is a 120 watt power supply. The cable is plenty long, so no issues there. But if for some reason you need a longer power cable, this is modular, so just buy a longer one of these and use that to extend your power cord. If you don't have your own display cable, then fear not, because Billing provide a nice HDMI cable in the box with the mini PC. It is one meter long, or three foot for my American friends. Check it out, I've connected my 4K display using that USB Type-C connector. So this indeed is Thunderbolt. If you'd like to expand storage on this mini PC, then you have two options. The first one is use an external hard drive, like these ones by Crucial. These are two terabyte SSDs, really fast. You can just connect them using a USB-C connector at the front or the one at the back. And you can use these to edit videos and photos right off of these SSDs. And option number two is M.2 SSD. But for that you will have to open this up. So let's see how easy it is to access the internal parts of this mini PC. There's just four screws to undo but they are protected by rubber, so let's just remove that. When you do this first time, it will be a little bit more difficult because there's adhesive down there, but once you do it the first time, they become quite easy to remove, although I do still struggle a little bit, just like so. Now we just have to undo these four screws. That's one, two, excuse my screwdriver, it is a little bit busted, it's falling out of the socket, but it will get the job done. There we go. After that, don't lose the screws. And there is a little tab here. I assume we just pull on that, yes. That is quite easy to remove. And take a look at this. There is a dust filter here. So it is a good idea to open up this cover every now and then to give this dust filter a clean. But we have to press on if we want to get to that SSD slot. 
two more screws to go. These are smaller screws and I believe we can lift it now. There we go. Inside there's two RAM slots, so if you want to upgrade RAM then you will have to replace these modules. And take a look at that SSD heatsink. It is quite big. One SSD slot is already in use and we have a spare one, so let's just unscrew that heatsink to gain access to that slot. Another small screw. One more. Come on, get out of there. And we can lift this up. And there we go. This is the SSD that comes with the PC and here is a spare M.2 slot. So if you wanted to expand the storage that way, then you just grab your M.2 SSD and put it in there. Just don't forget to unscrew that screw first. This is a 14 core 18 thread CPU and it consists of four performance cores marked as P cores, eight efficiency cores marked as E cores and two low power cores that are marked LP. Let's see how well it will do in Cinebench. Something appears to be quite broken in hardware monitor because it reports over 100% core utilization. However, the CPU is indeed loaded to 100%. All cores except for the LP cores, those are low power cores. Those are reserved for other tasks. The fastest P core boosted to 4.5 GHz max. However, at the moment it is keeping those P cores at around 3.2 to 3.5 GHz. The temperature is staying at around 80 degrees. And the PC is not silent, however, it is not loud either. Let's take a listen. I'm going to use this wireless microphone to let you listen to the noise. As you can see, it is not silent. However, it is not a whiny or high-pitched noise. Very subtle. However, if you like working in a completely silent environment, then I suspect that this noise will bother you. And those fans will ramp up, even if you do lighter workloads, something like a Windows update or installing a program. Not to the same extent, of course, they will be much quieter, but you will hear that fan. The 10 minute test run is done and the CPU scored 721 points. Compared to other CPUs, it is sitting well below the Ryzen 7 5800X as well as Apple's M1 Max. In terms of everyday activities, this mini PC is fast and snappy. Have a look at that. You can open any app and you don't have to wait a long time for it to open. Really quick, really responsive. And you can even use this PC to do video editing. Take a look at this. This is one of my H.265 videos. You can navigate the timeline. Sometimes it does take a moment for the timeline to load. Although it might be CapCut problem, I'm not sure. I usually work in Final Cut on my Mac, so I don't have Premiere Pro or DaVinci to test this with. This is more than suitable if you want to do some light video editing. If you are thinking about gaming on this thing, then don't expect the latest AAA games to run well, even at 1080p resolution using resolution upscaling and frame generation won't help either. This is Horizon Forbidden West and currently we are getting about 25 FPS. And the game does not look good at all. 
take a look at the settings. We are on very low graphics, that is the lowest you can go, 1080p resolution and ZSS is enabled and set to quality. And it looks quite horrible. And the performance is not great. It is still somewhat playable, so in a pinch <laughs> you could do it, but I wouldn't. And even if we enable frame generation, it doesn't help a lot either. Take a look at this. From 25 FPS, it has increased to around 30 FPS. And the image actually looks a lot worse. It is choppy, like a slideshow. So in this particular case, I actually prefer how 25 FPS looked and felt. And the situation will not improve even if we use upscaling set to ultra performance to absolutely destroy that image quality. Yeah, it looks absolutely horrific right now, pixelated as heck. And the FPS without frame generation is at 27 to 30 right now. It looks much worse and it doesn't play any better. Definitely not recommended for AAA gaming. However, you can quite easily enjoy a simpler game such as Counter-Strike 2. I'm currently running the game at 1080p using medium quality preset with a facade disabled. And I'm getting 80 plus FPS. The game runs quite smooth and I could play it like this, no issues. Yes, let's get it. I've seen a dip below 80 there. So you won't be getting a consistent 80 FPS experience, but staying at above 60 is doable. This is absolutely fine for enjoying CSGO casually. And if you want to enjoy a simple game, such as Hades for example, then you can do that no issues. Take a look at that above 120 fps and in this room right here i'm getting 119 fps 115 so there are dips below 120 from time to time at 1080p however the game still feels great let's do another room yeah this is definitely enjoyable i like it so it appears that if you want to do some light gaming, then this mini PC can deliver that. And if you're looking for more of a 60 FPS experience, then you can even increase the resolution. Let's try 4K. Oh yes, 57 FPS. Very nice, 51. 51 was the lowest value I've seen. So this is not quite ideal, but even at 4K, it is doable. I'm playing the game and it's fine. <laughs> Amazing. Although I imagine that a Ryzen-based APU system would do a much better job at gaming. Overall, I am quite happy with this mini PC. Especially I am very happy with how easy it is to upgrade the SSD because it has an additional M.2 slot so you don't even have to replace the SSD, you just have to add another one. In terms of performance I think it did really well for its size. If you're looking for a compact PC for your desk then I recommend it. But what do you think about the Beelink SE i14? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in buying this mini PC, then you can grab it on Amazon at the link in the description below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.